Hello, hello. Like running behind, so getting set up here. But hello. It is starting. Hello, hello. All right, good to see people on here. <clears throat> so back on to talk about narcissism. Yeah, that's what we're on about every week, but. I want to jump on here. Hey, good to see you. You need to come live sometime with me, by the way. My fudging kids. Um, but yeah. So, it's been a busy week so far. Regular, like, work, like my regular job, I guess you could say, was uh, decently busy. But then, uh, busy week with appointments. <clears throat> a lot of appointments this week. I've, uh have 18, <laughs> 18 one-on-ones this week. So it's, uh, it's been probably my most most packed week so far. But yeah, good to see you again. Hello, hello. Do narcs avoid saying thank you? Oh, a lot of times they do. Not always, but yeah, absolutely. Glad that some of it is helping. So that's the goal, to bring awareness, growth, healing, and change about narcissism because a lot of people don't know what it is. And other people um, don't have a clue. So I try to give people my perspective on it. On narcissism, how it's affected my life. One of my friends said they reached out to you for one-on-one. -on -one. They may have been one of them. Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, there's been a bunch. Uh, I've been starting to get some like reoccurring ones too. So um, that's been really cool. Some people that want to work more than just one session that actually want to set up like multiple sessions. That's kind of cool. Just released the other day... Um, uh, what is it? Uh, coaching like packages in one sense, so it be a discount where people can buy multiple ones, <clears throat> or like a th meet three times, meet five times, or whatever that kind of thing. So that's new. Put on the website. I'm going to be adjusting some prices by the end of the month. So looking into that as well. But yeah, a lot of different stuff. Is he really happy with his new person? No, he's not. Um, because happiness is all about him. It's not about the other person at all. Do narcs ever have empathy? I think they can. I think they most don't. And they don't acknowledge other people's feelings. That's kind of the difference. When they get money, why do they take why do they take care of strangers? Uh, about validation. Like they're trying to find validation from other people, from other things, high off of cheating, whatever it might be. Do narcissists file for divorce in a reason? I haven't really seen that very much. Most of the time, it's like an awful divorce battle and everybody else has to file for it. Normally, the narcissist isn't like the first person to file for divorce, but it happens. So. There we go. Um, do they steal their personality? I should read going to books, stores. So a lot of times, it's called mirroring. A lot of times they'll mirror your personality. They'll mirror like your likes, your interests, your wants, your desires, and things like that. And then they'll do that sometimes to be able to connect with you, but then sometimes they'll do it after you leave, whether to mess with your head, to in memory of, you could say in one sense. Um, but yeah, sometimes they do that. Hey, hey, good to see you on here. But yeah, um, yeah, like this live, share it with different people, just so we can try to spread the awareness about narcissism, everything that's going on with it. So I've got a couple people that I'm inviting just to come watch as well. Let's see. But yeah, uh, like I said, this week's been a little bit busy. Um, I've had 10 one-on-ones. Um, been talking to my wife a little bit more about the possibility of her either joining on one-on-ones if people want her or actually starting up her own one-on-ones. Um, she's like almost considering it. Like she's like close kind of a thing, um, but but not quite. She's like considering it. We're like almost there. 
but I'm not pressuring her. It's just something that we both brought up and we both talked about a little bit, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, a lot of people wish they would have known about a narcissist before it actually happened, before they met a narcissist. <laughs> Waited all week. I mean, I can start trying to do lives more often, but um, this week I'm not planning on, I mean, if someone wants to jump on, like I'll have them jump on, but I don't have any like planned guests or anything like that. So last week we had a uh, Cluster B and then uh, Lee came on for a little bit too. So that was pretty cool and also interesting, but it was all good. So yeah, no, absolutely. We'd love to talk to you. So um, if you're going to schedule a session, do it January. So at least book the schedule. It doesn't have to be in January, but at least like reserve the session in January because right now I put on the website, but I'm planning on raising the prices to match kind of some of the similar people on here, um, but that'll be like February 1st. So book before they change if that helps. But yeah, no, it's been it's been kind of crazy. It's been been busy. So the up until uh, yesterday, well, I've pretty much averaged all this week like three a day. And um, part of it is just uh, with my schedule because I, you know, have a job, have a full time job as well. But it works out. So, but it's been really cool. It's been really neat to be able to meet with people and talk about narcissism to work through the issues and the things they're dealing with. So, talk through the facts, the feelings, the stories that they're telling each other, and like to be able to like help people grow and help people like get better and like that's what's like really cool and like really awesome and the thing is like some of it is opening up more into other aspects where i'm not just talking to them about just narcissism and about just their relationship but like we're talking through like different aspects of life different aspects of their development and things like that um i had a chance to talk to somebody the other day and they were like yeah i don't think i'm going to talk to my therapist anymore because like i actually like had them like do stuff like talk through stuff like work through stuff and they were like my therapist had me do listen to like a podcast and a couple of things so um yeah i mean i'm trying to learn and grow do the best i can to be able to help people on here and so excited to do that but anyways hello hello thanks for joining us today yes i'd be considered covert all right so throw questions in the comments if anybody wants to ask a question in person, the guest request on so you can click on that, jump on, ask a question, jump back off, jump on, share a little bit of your story, jump off kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so um, uh, what else was I going to say? I guess just ask questions. I had something else I was going to tell you. Website is slowly getting some updates on it. Um, if you guys haven't listened at all, do have the podcast that's been going out. Um, if you already follow me on YouTube, don't worry about some of the podcasts because some of it's the same stuff. Um, but I also started this week. Yeah, this week because today was like episode six. I mean, they're not long. They're like eight minutes or whatever. But I started do adding um, more of a podcast as well. So I have like the podcast you can see on um Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. And with that, you can, on Spotify, you can actually watch the video, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then I've also been doing like separate, like eight minutes. I call, they say like inspire slash motivate. Um, so they're a little bit different. They're not just about narcissism, they're just in general kind of a thing. So uh, yeah, schedule appointments. Um, uh, podcasts are on Spotify under Raw Motivations or under Apple Podcasts, Raw Motivations. Um, you can also go to the website, Raw Motivations, click on podcast. You can click on it there and see that. So that's the same place we have like the one-on-ones and everything and all. If I have proved my partner cheated, I've shown him and he keeps saying, no, he didn't. Most narcissists will deny it. They'll deny it even if they have the facts straight in front of them because they can't take that responsibility of being proved wrong or having to admit that they're wrong. Um, I've got a couple of videos coming out about that. Uh, I recorded some on TikTok, a couple for YouTube today, but I don't, I don't remember the ones for YouTube. Do they think you're a weak person from the beginning or just easy to manipulate? Uh, sometimes they view you weak when you you know go back on your boundaries, when you don't actually stay consistent, um, and then they're going to try to push it over. Hello, hello. They'll deny it even if they... Yeah, they'll deny it no matter what. It's crazy. Now, their parents usually narcissistic too. Um, a lot of times they're narcissistic too, or you'll have parents that you know are just abusive, or that have narcissistic tendencies, or that are enablers, or that are like super controllers, like that kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, had proof denied, left alone. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Like they will deny nonstop. So I think I just did, I think I just did a video about like narcissists like arguing and like, that's like a huge one is like when a narcissist argues with you and you, they get to the place where you're going to prove their logic wrong and they realize that then all of a sudden they'll start doing like several things to be able to devalue you, to discard like all this type of stuff. And so when it happens, you're in the middle of an argument, the narcissist will start being like, how can I defeat this argument technically? Well, Technically, I only said this. Technically, it was this instead of this. Technically, that's a different color than what you're saying it is. Like, all this type of stuff. And then you have the the gaslighting of like, well, actually, that didn't even happen. Like, that didn't happen at all. And then you have the actual, like, devaluing of like, well, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, maybe you're too stupid to understand. Like, all this type of stuff. And that goes into a lot of arguments because they don't want to admit to the wrong, you know? Is it common for them to beg you back? Uh, especially like right at the end, like right before you leave? Yeah, um, it'd be common for them to beg because they're gonna try to do everything they can to keep you on a little bit longer. Uh, reactive abuse is a big part, for me, big part for me. He'd record me, yeah, and make you look like a crazy one. Yeah, and a lot of times they do that. As soon as the reactive abuse starts, they like stop instantly. Like they'll be like screaming at you and you raise your voice back and they're just like, why are you yelling at me? You know, it's, it's just crazy the change that happens. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say they all like hate you. They just love themselves. And when you love yourself so much, that looks like hate to other people. I have 11 year relationship, unless they have a new supply. Yep, they're always gonna have a backup plan. Yep. Yeah, and definitely, definitely, you see that a smirk. Um, always to what I don't know what the question was. Yeah. So trauma bond with a narcissist. You've got a, a trauma bond that's built over a period of time and dealing with a narcissist, and a lot of it is built on lies and built on the hope that they're going to turn out to be the same person that you fell in love with. But the problem was they never were. The problem was it was all a lie to start off with, and the narcissist has been slowly putting lies around you from the very start, from the very beginning about who they are, who they were, what they've done, who they've been with, anything like that and they're going to keep doing that time and time again over and over so as a result you slowly get to the place where you're in love with this person but you're in love with the original person that was fake and so over a period of time they start putting the lies around you and drawing you in like really tight to a trauma bond and a lot of times that goes back to them goes back to validation like you're not good enough you're not going to find love without me like who's going to want to date you know a single parent with a kid like all this type of stuff they're going to try to make you realize like hey you can't go anywhere and then you get out of the relationship you continue to move on and you're like wait a second like I still want this person. I still want to go back. I still want to have a relationship. I still want to be involved in some aspect or whatever. And you're like, this is stupid. Like, why do I feel this way? Well, do you feel that way? Because you still have hope a lot of times that they were who they originally said they were. And the problem is, is getting to the point where you realize that they're not realizing that a lot of it was a lie and realizing that, that they lied throughout the whole relationship. And as a result, that's where you end up being, where you're in love with someone, you're wanting someone that doesn't care about you and oftentimes that reality is really hard to be able to come to and that reality is really hard because you have to be able to unplug from some of your feelings and actually look at the facts of the situation of how did the narcissist demonstrate love how they demonstrate care how they show that consistently is that true what's behind those and like as you start to dive into all that you dive deeper and deeper through different layers of emotion of thoughts and feelings and and that's what I try to do I try to work with people where we go like level and level down to be able to get to the place where we can understand like hey this is the story that we've been believing for a period of time but it's actually incorrect it's based on feelings it's not based on facts so let's work on changing that to be actually accurate Um, no, I don't get pleasure when somebody cries. That would be more close to like the sociopath side, um, but that's not on my side. How do you re rekindle relationships after you leave a narcissist and they isolate you? Some of it's just being honest, just saying, hey, this is this is the shit I've been through. Like, 
um, having people understand three months and almost contact them, but thankfully stop. Yes, stay no contact. If you've got no contact, stay no contact. As soon as you break that, you're, then you're theirs. So watch out. Hello, survive. Good to see you. My narc used to listen. Ah, sorry, it disappeared. It's also known abusing for years. Yeah. Um, as a covert narc, how do you fight the superiority passive aggressiveness? Um, as far as like me being superior to everybody else and like lording that over people through how I talk, how I communicate. Um, I think a lot of it is like realizing, you know, um, realizing that I'm not all that, you know, and part of that has been some of the self-awareness part of that has been just learning and growing 57 days, no contact. Good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Um, I just remind me like you were, I'm doing like a counter on the uh the narc app as well because that's going to be something that i want people to keep track of is how long have you been no contact with somebody um if you guys are interested in the app it's actually in the approval process uh if you guys don't know i've worked on i heard a lot of people on here saying they wanted it and they were interested in it um but i've got the narc app that's coming out narcissistic abuse recovery community um it's a mouthful. I forget half the time, but it's actually in the approval process, and it's in the approval process uh, for Apple and for Google Play. Um, right now, the web the web app version actually is live. I haven't really announced it to anybody just because um, I'm still adding stuff to it. I'm still working the kinks out, but you actually can go on and take a look at it. Um, if you go to my website, rawmotivations.com, and look, it has a link for the NARC app. You can actually go in there. You can sign up under the web version. Um, it works exactly the same as the, the app will um, because you can do it on the web and the web and app, no matter what, it all transfers over and everything. But anyways, if anybody's interested, check that out. The website also has everything from YouTube videos, the podcasts, and also one-on-one -on -one links if you wanna talk sometime to be able to de deal with stuff. So but anyways, a lot of y'all encouraged me to build the app, so definitely gonna need support um, as it gets off the ground. It was definitely like a big gulp as I uh, I purchased it. Um, it was like initial purchase right around $1,000. And I was like, I hope this works. Um, but the the company I've been doing it with has been like super awesome. Um, they've been really good like in support and everything. Anyways, all right. What questions y'all got? Um, yeah, check out the web version. So it's the same exact thing. So you can at least uh, get it rolling. Awesome, awesome. Um, can they really miss and love you? He seems so convinced he doesn't want to get back together. I mean, they miss the control. Um, they miss the control over you. They miss the control over controlling someone else's life. You know, um, there's not really much miss as far as like, oh, I emotionally miss you. No. Um, lying daily. Do narcs think they own you forever, even though you stay no contact for a long time? Uh, a lot of them, yes, especially the ones that go on more of the obsessive side. Uh, yeah, they'll definitely think they own you. Um, I know someone that the, the narcissist said it to him. They said, I own you. You're mine. Like, they literally like said that to them. Um, and it kind of freaked them out. I mean, it should because, you know, they're not property. They're not objects, but that's what narcissists will view them. They'll view people as objects. What would end the Hoovers when they're totally done? They're totally done when you make sure they're totally done. They're totally done when you've blocked them so much that there's no way for them to get um, contact you. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, I was like, so often when the narcissist leaves and they're like blowing up your phone and all this kind of stuff, like you block and then they get a new number, like they block, get a new number. Like, I don't know. I mean, maybe y'all have tried this before, but like I was thinking, I was like, why doesn't the empath get a new number? Because a lot of times you're going through and like blocking all these numbers because the narcissist is getting a bunch of new numbers. Like if you just get a new number. I mean, I know sometimes people have them like tied to work or things like that. But if like, if you don't use your, your cell phone line for your work phone number, like just change your number. Like you've still got your contacts, just text people and be like, Hey, here's my new number. Don't give it out. You know? But yeah, they, they definitely keep they definitely keep after you a lot. Dealing with it now, we have a child together and I blocked them. I got a co parent. Do they miss us when they stop hoovering? No. Hoovering isn't a sign of missing you. Hoovering isn't a sign of care. Hoovering is a sign of manipulation and control. Uh, clear boundaries, making sure there's boundaries and consequences. Why is there never a clear answer to a question or conversation that's never clear? Uh, a lot of times they want to word it around to a place that they don't have to give you a clear answer because sometimes a clear answer means they have to be honest. Being honest means they have to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable means they'd probably be wrong. Need to make what I go. I don't even know what to make a quote. 
I've got like a couple like little short TikToks that I'm gonna like drop here in a little bit. I recorded like 19 earlier today. They're like literally like five seconds to 10 seconds of like random stuff. I think I had one that was like, Narciss is trash. The only difference is you can get rid of the garbage. Um, sorry. He wants to be friends. No, he doesn't want to be friends. Um, he just wants to get back to you. Uh, found boundaries do not work and will not apply to them. They will break them or leave. Yes, boundaries have to have consequences. So if a boundary doesn't have a consequence that you follow through, a boundary without a consequence is just a speed bump for a narcissist. All you're going to do is do a slight little bump in the road and they're going to blow through it and walk all over you because of the fact that there's no consequences that people follow through. And you might ask me about that and I've talked to many different people and they have a boundary early on in the relationship that says, if you cheat on me, I will leave. And then I asked them like, hey, did they cheat on you? Be like, yeah, they cheated X amount of times or they cheated this many years ago. And I'm like, why are you still there? Like you didn't follow through with the boundary. That's why they keep abusing. That's why they keep coming back because they know you're not going to stick up with your boundaries. Love bombing, a lot of times is invisible. A lot of times people want it to be invisible. Um, like a lot of times, like I've talked to a lot of people with that they say on like the first date, like on the first date, they were like, I wasn't even attracted to the guy. Like the guy was a jerk. Like I wasn't even attracted to the girl. Like she like just gave me weird vibes. I wasn't even interested in anything like that. But then because of love bombing, they got him hooked. Sometimes love bombing is subtle. Like I agree with you there, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes the other person doesn't care they'd rather see the love bombing than with the red flags rested call from jail or the ex had when does the narg reject the supply for real or is it a forever thing a lot of times it's for everything um sometimes i've seen it when they've been like exposed to like friends and family like they've not um gone back but there's not really a consistency it kind of depends all narcs are the same type different flavor like it's kind of hard uh, is there a certain type of narc that plays victim? I've heard like a victim narc, vulnerable narc, like stuff like that. Um, I don't know. There's, I mean, you can Google it and it's six one way, half a dozen the other. Like there's a lot of different names for narcissists, covert, grandiose. Um, I don't even remember all of them. Som somatic, like a bunch of stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I get in the weeds when I look at that. So honestly, I don't look that much as well. Side of torture and narcs be running, get rid of them. Ben, have you ever tried to love bomb someone and it didn't work? No, it always worked. Does an ex narcissist come back even if I cause a narcissistic injury? I would say you have the the least. I would say you have the best chance of them not coming back, but I can't make any promises. Why did you, narcs choose certain people? You think it'd be certain people because a lot of times it does seem that way, but sometimes it's just like whoever's going to take them, whoever they can control. You know, like it's not always consistent, but I do agree. Like a lot of times they'll pick like um, a lot of times they'll pick like vulnerable people. They'll pick people who might have already had abuse in their childhood that might have already had like um, low self-esteem from parents not helping build them up correctly. Like they'll a lot of times they'll go for that. Um, but then sometimes they'll also go for like the strongest in the pack or stuff like that. Like it really just kind of depends. He's been trying to break me down since. Best way to fight back is not fighting at all. Um, yeah, a lot of times, like, going gray rock. Gray rock, from what I've experienced in talking to people, um, gray rock, I think, works 50% of the time. That's my educated guess. Um, it either works and they get disinterested and they continue to move on, um, or it doesn't work and it provides more rage. But I haven't seen I haven't seen it swing one way or the other. One way or the other. Um, as far as like gray rock, gray rock is not letting them get a reaction out of you. It's like they're yelling at you and you're acting like a rock. You're not reacting. Um, and a lot of times if you don't react, the narcissist will move on, find other supply, leave, whatever, because they're not getting the reaction they want because they want a reaction. They want control. They want manipulation. If they can't get that, then that supply is dead. It's drained. It's tapped out kind of a thing, but it doesn't always work. So don't be like Ben said. And it didn't work. No, it doesn't always work. Gray Rock, from what I've seen, works like 50% of the time. Depends on the people. Does therapy help? He says the therapist says he's not one, but I know he lives in a fantasy reality. He might be manipulating the therapist. Um, therapy only works if you want it to work. Um, I had someone ask me that in a one-on-one. -on -one. They were like, um, they were like, did ther like, why did therapy work for you and your narcissism and it didn't work for someone else? And I was like, it worked for me because I went to therapy wanting to change. I went to therapy wanting to be honest. 
Like, otherwise, like, it wouldn't have worked and I just would have manipulated the therapist. It's kind of funny because the therapist that I go to, like, the, it's like a whole group. So there's a bunch of different ones there. But she told me, she was like, now I'm kind of like the, the narcissism therapist here. She's like, I wasn't, like, identified as that before you came here. Um, it's kind of funny. But, um, um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about breaking the trauma bond. I do, I do that some on one on ones, and we do have the trauma bond workshop coming up. Um, we do have the trauma bond workshop coming up on February 5th, I think. Um, but that's on the website as well. So, um, a lot of the trauma bond is built on false stories, false reality, and false hope. Uh, and a lot of that is built on they, they loved me, they cared about me, like we were happy together, all this type of stuff. And it's based on like false realities that you believe like early on. And then it gets tied in even deeper with abuse and everything like that because the highs, the lows, the highs, the lows, and then back and forth. It's a whole like, process of like manipulation to get someone tied in locked in tight um and then when they leave they're like i know i shouldn't go back because it was it was awful it was torture like they hurt me destroyed me but i still miss them and i miss them because of x y and z and typically x y and z is false like it's not actually based in reality so a lot of times i'll talk to people and we'll go through and i'm like what are you feeling about it okay now what's the story you're telling yourself well, I was happy when this happened, or I enjoyed this, or I was connected in this way, and I was like, okay, what's the facts behind that? And then they start d diving deeper of, okay, do the facts actually support the story that I'm telling myself? And a lot of times it doesn't. Uh, other times it supports like halfway, um, and then we have to be like, okay, what's the facts on the opposite side? And they're like, oh, yeah, I've got lots of those. And then we get through those, and then we have to sit back and we have to construct a brand new story, a brand new narrative that's like, okay, what is actually happening? Let's start living based on the facts, not based on just emotions. Not that emotions are bad, but in these type of relationships, you have to find something solid to rely on. Otherwise, you'll start to question yourself, doubt yourself because of the gaslighting, the manipulation, and then even like watching them after you leave or anything like that will mess with your mind a lot. What does the stuff feel you do when you'd rage? Uh, like scream, yell, throw things, punch the wall, um, bunch of stuff. Like say all the all the names in the book. Do they actually know they're being manipulated or subconscious? Um, I would say like half and half. Sometimes the manipulation isn't something you even know you're doing, but it is like subconscious. And sometimes it's like a, uh, what is it? Like a defense mechanism of like, if I do this and this, I can avoid this. You know, that's the point. Uh, what do you expect when you go no contact with them? You expect to win. A lot of people are like, I feel like they won because, you know, I went no contact. They left and they're having a great old life. No, they're still living in void. They're still living in a cycle and they're never going to get out of it. So, like, you win. You win because you get away. You win because the ultimate, like, stick it to them is ghosting them, going no contact, and they just lost their control. But a lot of times people are like, wait, no. You win when you go no contact. As long as you stay no contact. As soon as you break, you've lost. Why would the narc suddenly go quiet after constant hoovering? Um, probably another way as far as a reverse hoover. So it makes you freak out, kind of wonder what's going on, and then you go back. Uh, do you recommend a female or a male therapist for a male narc? Uh, it kind of depends. Mine's a female. Um, we work great together. Uh, the male... The male therapist that I've seen, which I think was like two of them, uh, I didn't connect with, and a couple of them definitely didn't feel like safe with. Like one of them, I just felt judged. So I was like, "Why the heck am I going to talk to you?" I was like, "This is my issue," and he's like, "Okay." I was like, "No." Um, I want to go no contact, but we have children together. Yeah, so no contact with children. It's it's difficult. It's crazy, but you might have to go with having like a third party in communication, or you might have to go of like, hey, we're only going to communicate through email, and here's the stipulations. What made you get therapy and be accountable? Uh, a lot of different things. Like part of it, like I got to the place where I wanted to change and I wanted to grow. Like I denied, you know, when my wife brought up, she was like, I think you're a narcissist. Like I denied it for. I don't know, like months. And then I said I was going to go to therapy and that took me another like year before I actually like went to therapy. 
any therapist or their special therapist narcs you need to for a narcissist it has to be one that has a narcissistic background that has a, like emotional abuse background some even with like sex addiction stuff like that like you need to have one who's educated in narcissism that's why i don't recommend couples counseling i don't recommend a narcissist going to see like a christian counselor like all this kind of stuff because like you'll just get screwed over like they're going to manipulate they're going to use anybody and everybody um to be able to get to you like it's just crazy by school just because I didn't get that coming um ah sorry I'm missing a bunch of them if I miss it just throw it back in there I'm not ignoring them on purpose sorry are narcs actually victims of abuse or are they just manipulate a lot of times they're victims of abuse like early on in life they're not they're not victims once they get out and about and once they grow up they're abusing people do I care that I hurt people? I didn't then. I do now, which is why we're changing what we're doing. But I did, didn't did then. Can you become a narcissist? No, it's typically brought up um, early on in life. It might get revealed a little bit more le later on in life. But um, no, you're not going to become a narcissist later on. You lost memories from the abuse phase. A lot of times our minds try to be able to help like save us and so as a result they'll um like blank out or like lose parts that were like excessively like traumatic um and yeah they could be it could be really difficult because a lot of times our minds want to live the highs and ignore the lows and if we can do that then life seems a little bit more bearable life seems a little more easy than actually looking at this is what actually happened um yeah, I think I'm learning and beginning to love and beginning to learn the concept of that because before all of this, before I started becoming self-aware, before I started getting into therapy and things like that, like love for me was just about myself. Um, it wasn't about anyone else. And so for a narcissist to truly be able to begin to love means they have to step out of the way. They have to get themselves out of themselves in one sense and learn to actually be able to love and care for someone else and that the world doesn't revolve around them. And that's hard. Like, that's hard to get through your head. That's hard to realize. That's hard to get. I mean, I, w I would joke about that, like, growing up. Like, that was, like, a joke. Like, you know, don't you know the world revolves around me? Like, it was just, it was just, like, common. Um, Thanks so much for the likes. Keep, uh, if you can, like it and share, because we're trying to bring a lot of awareness to narcissism um, and everything going on there. I don't think it's gener <laughs> generic. Blah, I don't think it's genetic. Um, I don't think narcissism is genetic. There's some people that say about like gray matter, stuff like that. Like, I'm not saying I disprove whatever they're they're saying. I just don't think it's genetic. Like, I think if you take a narcissist, if you take if you take a baby and you put it in a narcissistic household, you're going to get a narcissistic kid. If you take a baby and you put it in an uh, uh, empathetic and a household that's learning of how to like build the child up, help them deal with their emotions, then odds are you're not going to get a narcissist. Like, I think... Everyone is a, um, uh, what's it? Everyone's a product of their upbringing. Now, I do think there is genetics with some sociopaths, some psychopaths, stuff like that, that they have more. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I actually was dropped on my head as a baby. Oh, we were in the shopping cart. I was standing up in the shopping cart and I flipped over and I hit my head and like screamed like the rest of the time because like I hit my head. I don't know how old I was, but yeah, I actually was dropped on my head. So that's a good comment there. Um, hey, hey, the narc father and brother at Narcissus. Yeah, a lot of times narcissism will like run the family. I don't know that I was the golden child. I was the only child, so I probably was. Um, can you talk about narcissists and the black eyes when they rage? I mean, when people get mad, when they feel like different emotions, you will have the pupils like dilate and get all that way. But I mean, it is a uh, common thing that are like people are like, oh, your narcissist did that too. Like with like high rage, like going like completely black. That probably gives like more of the the demon vibe that a lot of people are like, oh, they're all demons. Like, no, they're not all demons. Just some people like supernatural, and that's where you see it from. Um, the grandparents spoil me. Not really that I remember. Do you think a narcissist is, is situational? I'm not sure what you mean about situational. When something triggers you and you want to react in the old way, but you don't, do you feel peaceful or like... When something triggers you and you want to react in an old way, but you don't, do you feel peaceful or like... Uh, 
That's a good question. It's like a it's like a conflict. It's more like a battle. Like when something triggers me and I'm trying not to react to that trigger that it used to be, like it's like an internal war. And like sometimes defeating that or working through it, I'm not sure if I would say necessarily peaceful. It's definitely not peaceful in the moment, but like after the fact, um, there's more like a, I guess maybe calm. I would describe it as calmness. Maybe that's peace. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. The deep question. Huh. Um, where am I at? Where am I at? Sorry, I'm missing a bunch. Uh, I need to do like a video or like a series on dating after the narcissist, but um, I feel like that's going to take like some good thought because otherwise, I don't no, I don't wear eyeliner. Um, do narcs cry? Typically, no. Um, some do to be able to manipulate, but yeah. Um, is there more supply that's consistent? I don't know where it is. Uh, do I get physically tired from processing new emotions? Yeah, emotions suck and they're annoying to process. <laughs> I'll sit down with there and be like, well, that sucked. I had to deal with those emotions. Like, yeah, we're still learning. We're still growing. Uh, can be a narc and not rage? Yes. Um, you can be passive aggressive, more covert. Do you have a subconscious? Are you my conscious? Um, I'm new here. How did you become self-aware in the first place? A million different steps. Um, a lot of those with uh, God, with learning, with reading, with um, I would say like a couple rock bottoms in one sense. Um, a lot of different stuff. Um, what will be a narc reaction for silent treatment? Does if the silent treatment doesn't work with them, typically rage. Things are narcissists are afraid of. I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit different for everybody. Um, maybe being alone would probably be the closest one I could touch on. Otherwise, like for me, like there's not a whole lot of things that like pop on that list at all. Can narc change for somebody, or do they need a therapy first to be open, um, or better for a new mate? I think they could start the change for somebody but if it doesn't change to be doing it for themselves and for a higher purpose it's not going to last so you could start changing for someone like a narcissist could start changing for someone but it's going to be short-lived if that's all that's based on uh spiritual abuse by the narc yeah absolutely so a lot of times narcissists will use spiritual abuse they'll use um abuse because they've learned stuff in the bible they try to use the bible to be able to gaslight manipulate control people and you know like putting it together like spiritual abuse christian abuse um when it comes down to it like there's people that abuse that use those as tools but there's not christians that abuse there's just abusers because you can't have an impact with a God that's not about abuse and then say you live that way. doesn't match up. Is rage an act or you should really be scared? You should really be scared. Keep coming at the wrong time. What I miss about reactive, reactive abuse explanation? Keep coming in the wrong time, reactive abuse. So like reactive abuse, so you have the narcissist that they're in the other, they're pushing your buttons, they're yelling at you, they're screaming at you, they're raging and all of a sudden, and finally you've had enough of it. You had enough of them accusing you, you've had enough of them trying to gaslight you, lie to you, manipulate you, hurt you, everything like that. So you respond like meeting them at the same tempo, like their rage, like yelling at them, like whatever, like maybe you slap them back or whatever thing like that. Instantly it switches. Like why, like, what are you doing? Like, I'm not yelling at you. Like, why are you coming at me? Like, that's when they start recording you. That's when they start controlling you. That's when they start manipulating you. It messes with your head because in that moment, you know logically, I just yelled at this person. And they're saying, like, you're yelling at me. Like, that's mean. That's unkind. Like, whatever they're saying. Uh, well, they probably wouldn't use words. But, like, you realize logically, like, I just yelled at this person. I just screamed back at this person. So there's the reality of, like, I just screamed at this person, and they're going to take that, and they're going to be like, whoa, like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you yelling at me? Acting like they never did it and that they never caused the trigger that caused you to yell at them to start off with. Now you feel bad? What did I miss? I miss a lot of comments when I start getting on a soapbox. Don't older narcs have dementia in old age? Uh, there's there's aspects of my childhood and my early life that I don't remember. It's a lot of stuff I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I think when you have built a, a life on so many lies, you start losing bits and pieces of it. 
Now that I've heard talk about rage, I've heard other people talk about rage. I mean, yeah, the rage is huge. Um, the rage is huge because you're inconveniencing me. You're hurting my kingdom. You're hurting my universe. You're inconveniencing like my world. So like, yeah, I'm gonna rage at you. <laughs> Sometimes I get on a roll and I don't want to stop, but I like need to stop because otherwise I miss like 30 comments. Um, yeah, they don't take accountability. Accountability means they might be wrong. Do narcs ever feel guilty? Their guilt is like microscopic. Will narc let go eventually? A lot of times, no. Relationship with the wife, it is improving and growing, but it is a journey. It is a journey. Like, we're doing well. Like, we're not, like, on the brink of divorce or separation or anything like that. I guess it's just, like, specify instead of, like, being vague. I'm not trying to be vague. But we're in counseling together. We've been going there uh, for, I guess, like, a month now. We were with a guy before that that we dumped him after a month because it was, like, it was not good. Um, side note, I always try to specify if you're with a narcissist, don't go to counseling together. Like, the reason we're going to counseling together now is because we've both been in counseling for... Like, she's been over a year. I've been, like, a year, year-ish. She's been probably closer to two years individually. Um, and then we just recently started going to counseling together. So. Uh, we actually need to retake the love language test. We took it, like, years ago. But we haven't taken it, like, in a good while. But that's a good question with the love language. We did that years ago, and then some of ours, like, shifted. And I think some of that was with trauma with abuse like with me like with lying and manipulation like some of mine is like gone all over the place are they filled with shame and super insecure a lot of times yeah it's just buried under the surface how do you handle a narcissist who stonewalls who like completely cuts you out and that's a hard one because you're not really going to be able to get through typically um and even if you did, they'd blame you. The couples once we walked out and he raised the way home. Yeah. I mean, that is like a really good way to be able to tell. Like I like I said, like I do not recommend anybody to go to couples counseling with a narcissist. But in one sense, if you did end up going to couples counseling, you probably know after the first after the first one if it's a good idea. Because they'll rage at you on the way home. They'll absolutely trash you. They'll use the conversation inside therapy to be able to prove how they're doing right, how it's all on you. You'll see them manipulate like in the counseling session. Um, I've only done, I think right now, like two meetings, like two one-on-ones with couples. And like it's, you can see it pretty quick. Like if the narcissist is in the relationship and they're not interested in change, they'll say they're about change. But it's a bunch of BS. Like, I had someone today that were like, can you actually tell if it's a narcissist? And I was like, if you, if they talk long enough, yeah. Like, if, you, if they talk long enough, you can tell and they, like, reek of it. It's crazy. Did they ever feel bad? No. Feeling bad would have to be accountable, admit shame. Cheating and lying won't admit it. I'm not going to admit it. What's the difference in percentage if a narc is a female or male? So, from what I've heard and what I've, what I've seen, you're going to have the majority the higher end okay these are not official numbers so don't quote me or come at me i'd say 75 percent of narcissists would be men 75 percent of bpd would be women it's kind of the odds back and forth histrionic i think it's mainly women i don't know i i know that's more of the the 10 but Hopefully that answers again. Don't don't quote me because I don't know for sure. But that's what I've seen. But I haven't seen like consistent numbers on that. If I continue not respond to the Hoover, will you eventually leave you alone? That is the goal and that is the hope. Um, at this point, if you don't have kids, you shouldn't be seeing a Hoover because you should be going so no contact that he can't. But yeah, good question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, histronic is usual woman. That's what I was thinking, but. I don't want to say, uh, so I would guess probably like 90%, 95%, um, but yeah. If they was facing jail time, would you help them? Like you as in you or you as in me or like what? I'm not sure what you're asking there. Abuse and alcoholism with narcissists. So uh, narcissistic personality, like a lot of times have 
Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Wow, blank. Um, a lot of times they have addictions that come along with it. And a lot of times those addictions are used for sedation. I mean, a lot of people, most people use sedictions just for sedation. They're sedating another problem. They're sedating something underneath. Um, and so a lot of narcissists come with addictions because they have a very obsessive nature. And they're very obsessed about the people that they're with, the control, everything like that. So a lot of times they'll have those addictions as well. Husband of the chain of the nurses. What I would you help them? Yeah, but I don't know what you're asking. Put that together in a different question. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got that the husband was the cheater and the narcissist, but I don't know what the you was. Was the you you or was the you like me or I'm not sure who was helping who. Sorry. Um, do you want to be who you were before the trauma or does it scare you? The trauma of what? Sorry. How do I deal with the Hoover if I have a kid? It's always filled with I miss you. Uh, block no contact. Only communicate through email. Like go third party. Have them understand like, hey, we can communicate about the kids, but that's all you're going to get from me. So if he's communicating about anything else, don't respond. Uh, sweet. Thanks for confirming the histronic and the BPD. Appreciate that. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people, like, once they've gone no contact, they've deleted social media for a period of time or for a long time. I don't know if jail's the worst place for a narcissistic person. They can find supply wherever they go. Haven't seen your stuff in a while. Well, where have you been? Um, what did you ask for, about a Hoover? Uh, Hoover's when the nurses try to come back in your life and control you. And that can be because they want the control, because they want the challenge, because they ran off supply with someone else. Uh, void's getting better. It's still there, but yeah. Can you talk to what it's like discarding the narcissist? Uh, for you, freedom. For them, loss of control. Hey, hey. Hey, Charles. Good to see you. Would you consider getting magnetic stimulation on your Brian? I don't know. I haven't met Brian. No, I've never considered that. Um, it's a great thing when you can listen to the BS that comes out and you know, yeah. I think my ex wanted to me to chase him because that's what I used to do. Yeah, they want that chase. They want to feel like validated. They want to feel like someone wants them so much. Well, the narc's reaction if silent treatment didn't help them. Uh, a lot of times rage. Um, IBPD and he's a covert NPD. I have so much difficulty to know my part in the breakup. Yeah, no, definitely like that can be very confusing with all that. It takes a lot of self-discipline to co-parent healthy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, the girl I was with for a period of time, she had BPD, narcissistic traits, and like that was that was like a really big high, like early on, because um, what they were looking, what she was looking for was what I was getting. What I was looking for was what she was giving. All, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't really know. I mean, that's. I know, like, there's an aspect of, like, early childhood trauma as far as, like, lack of emotional support, um, and I can identify that to, like, a couple different things, but I can't identify, like, a specific event or thing or, like, trauma in particular that happened, um, and I also know that was, like, not, like, super young, but it was, like, at a younger age, um, but yeah, I don't, so yeah, I don't know what life would be like before the trauma, because I don't even know exactly where the trauma was, if that makes sense. When Arx, you blame me for leaving him multiple times saying I caused him trauma and emotional abuse. Yeah, a lot of times they'll say that. Uh, when they stop reaching out, does that mean they're done? Like stalking over the internet too? Maybe, but you want to make sure everything is blocked so there's no way that they can get back. Now, there's no way that they can get back in your life. Is it possible? But it is possible to break the trauma bond? Yeah, absolutely. Good, I'm glad you left because of the abuse. Like You shouldn't have to put up with that. Are you paranoid? I don't think I'm paranoid. I think I've had paranoid moments, but I don't think I'm paranoid. But yeah, so I feel like we're all someone God made us to be, then shit happen. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff comes in. How do you protect my kids from being future narcs? Great question. So provide a safe place for them to grow emotionally and to not um, put, that, put them down when they're dealing through a lot of stuff. Because a lot of narcissism is built on shame and insecurities. And if they're brought up in a household where those shame and insecurities aren't able to be brought forth in a safe space, 
then they're going to find coping me- mechanisms to be able to hide them and be able to move past them. Um, but yeah, like parenting with kids and like trying to help make sure that, you know, they don't turn out to be a narcissist is very, very hard. Um, it's doable for sure. And I think, I honestly think more of it comes in line with what you see today of like respectful parenting and things like that, because you're actually trying to teach and grow and develop a person versus just tell them to conform or tell them to do something. Cause, um, just like conforming like doesn't really help it doesn't really help like people actually change the change has to come from them i mean that's one of the things that i love doing like whenever i'm talking with people on like one-on-ones is like we could sit down to one-on-one and i could tell you hey you need to do x y and z but at the end of the day like that's not going to help you like it's not going to help you to have me say like hey do this do this do this because oftentimes it's going to be short-lived the change still has to come from you It still has to have me walk you through step by step of, hey, what's going on? What are you feeling? What's the facts? What's the story you're telling yourself? All right, what's that actually mean to you? Let's change it around, see where we're going to go with it. And then you have to apply it. Like if you don't apply it, then everything that I say is just going to be like null and void. So that's why I've had people on here like ask me like, hey, would you talk to my narcissistic husband or something? I'm like, yeah, if they reach out, like I'll talk to them. But like I'm not going to. I'm not going to reach out. I'm not going to try to contact them because I'm not going to waste my time. I was actually talking to somebody on a one-on-one the other day. And I was like, I think I'm going to put like the place for like narcissists on my website to actually like have a spot to be able to click on like a one-on-one. And I'm just going to like charge like a big amount. And I'm like, if you want chains, like you got to pay for it, dude. Sorry. Um, sometimes a girl too. But so far, the only ones that have contacted me about narcissism and done a one-on-one are guys. So not trying to say it's only guys but give your kids a safe place to express their feelings yes 100 percent. yeah mine unblocked and friend requested after two months no contact and but hasn't messaged me didn't accept good make sure you block them they'll unblock so a lot of times they can come back um do they feel like you have emotionally disconnected from them yes if they had an emotional tie with you which most of the time they don't because they don't care do narcissists know intentionally they're abusing or is it unconscious? Uh, I think you mean subconscious, but a lot of times uh, the abuse is a defense mechanism. Like like you have people like, oh, they know and all this kind of stuff. Well, a lot of narcissists don't walk into the relationship being like, hmm, how can I abuse this person? A lot of narcissists walk into the relationship and then don't know the cycle that they're in and don't know how to get out like really they're struggling and trying to figure out how to get out i'm not saying that to be like oh like the narcissist is a you know love on the narcissist no i'm not saying that i'm just saying like a lot of times the abuse that's happened is not always initially starting out intentional yes it's manipulative yes it's trying to avoid different things that kind of stuff but yeah uh you see a lot more intention with sociopath psychopath is your one-on-one for the alley of the narc or really for the person um oh no yeah no the biggest the biggest group of people i talk to is people in narcissistic abuse a narcissistic abusive relationship that's like um the the biggest majority of people that i talk to and like life coaching like working through different things like that um but yeah uh but yeah i've only talked to I don't know. I've only talked to a couple of people that have said like they have narcissistic tendencies and most of the, most of the, so, okay. I've only talked to a couple of people like, okay, off the top of my head, I want to say like five. Okay. I've been doing one-on-ones for what, three months now, something like that. I've only talked to, I want to say five guys that have reached out to me and said, Hey, I think I'm a narcissist. My ex sent me your video. I've just realized about narcissism and they've reached out to me and they've said, I think I'm a narcissist. I sit down, I talk with them. I tell them to stop fucking lying, to be a man, like all this kind of stuff, get into therapy. And as far as I know, none of them have reached back out to me and like um, gone through the wake up warrior challenge or like all this kind of stuff. And so like at the end of the day, I'm just like, I'll talk to you, but like, you got to put in the work. If you're not going to put in the fucking work, then forget it. Like, I don't know. I love it when narcissists reach out because I'm like, there's hope. <laughs> and then I talk to them I'm like, um, but are you actually going to follow through? So. Yeah, there's different levels, I'd say. Like there's on the on the narcissist scale, like the higher up you are on the scale, like gets closer to like sociopath and stuff like that. Isn't it innately not narcissistic to make it that you struggle with narcissism? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
been through a lot to get us to this point. How hard is it for you to start therapy? It took me a year. I think it I think it was close to a year before I got into therapy because I was in denial. Is a serial chilling part of the rush of the chase getting caught? Yeah, um, cheating in general or like keeping multiple supplies is like a high. Um, is like the what can you get away with? How many people can you be with? How many people can you be with at the same time? Like how many people can you triangulate back to each other and like, everything? Yeah. Six substrates in our six tendencies. I'm not sure about that. I'm not doubting you. I just I don't know anything about that. Subsides if you allow it. I don't know what she said. The pain after I leave feels worse. Yeah, the pain definitely feels worse after you leave. Because it's like you're going on detox. Ah, pulled on my comments. Someone in the comments. Yeah, when you go on detox, that's that's what it's like. And yeah, it is sick. Um, would they ever intentionally get caught cheating? Yes, if they wanted to get out of the relationship without saying they wanted to get out of the relationship. I've seen that before. Do you ever want to be genuine or prefer gaslight, love bomb, devalue, and past relationship? In the past, I always wanted that. Like That was a lot easier. That was a lot safer is what I thought. Will Nark try to run into you or physically stalk you after this card? Yes, 100%. Uh, flying monkeys last week. I think that's the worst. Do they ever change? Only if they're open and honest about who they are. Uh, just hit what? Oh, multiple the multiple supplies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like, a lot of times they have, like, multiple supplies. I was talking to someone the other other week or whatever um, where they actually knew the other supplies. I mean, a lot of times supplies know each other, know about each other. But, like, like she actually knew, like, the other, like, four or five supplies. And I was like, you're a lot nicer than me. Like, I'd, like call him up for coffee and like show him all like screenshots and be like yeah you all have been sleeping around the same guy um but it's just no one month no contact awesome that's so good keep counting keep it growing that's so good that's awesome um what time is it oh it's 9 30 already sweet yeah if anybody's interested and in, just check out the website just go to rawmotivations.com check out the website i've got one-on-ones on there I've got different coaching packages we're coming out with um the podcast is linked there some of the youtube videos um and then there's also the tab for the narc app um if you guys haven't heard about that narcissistic abuse recovery community that coming out where we can get like-minded people that have been um through the abuse cycle that actually want to be able to connect with other people but also have a place where they can learn about it they can go through like classes like lessons like i've got different stuff i've um working on loading up there. I've asked Lee to do something. So he's in here. So put that pressure on him. I've asked him to do a couple of videos that I can put up there, um, have like a lesson there. I've got a couple of the lessons coming from uh, unfiltered.net. Um, um, that one's a good narcissist website as well. Um, will you accept them? I don't know what you're asking. Uh, do you really think that after going to therapy and et cetera, when they ask for a chance to come back, do you accept them? You got to see consistent change and honest vulnerability. If you're, if they're not open with that, um, then like nothing's actually going to change. Do they really love you? Like, do they really love for real? Even kids? I don't think my next. Uh, no, they don't. They love themselves. It's all about themselves. The hardest addiction I had to break. It's no good. Won't go back. Though still miss the high. Yeah, that trombone is real. It's really tough. My narc acted hurt and surprised when I told him I didn't feel safe with him. Yeah, they'll definitely feel that. And they'll turn around so the blame's on you, so it's your fault. A year ago, I was a wreck of my own abandonment issues, but now holding life. It is possible. Break that trauma bond for sure. Biggest thing is a lack of closure. Closure comes from you. It takes time, but it takes looking at the facts. It takes looking at the reality of what actually happened, who they actually were, and how they actually showed up. Um... A lot of times we want to attach and feel like closure has to be with the other person or has to be understanding. Um, it doesn't have to be understanding their mindset and it doesn't have to be with the other person, but it does come internally. It does come through facing the facts and the reality and working on that. Eye contact hard for them? No, not necessarily. Sometimes, but I wouldn't say not necessarily. Um, when you say it felt safe, safe from what? Someone hurting you or seeing the real you? Uh, I don't remember that was in conversation back too. Sorry. Uh, any t tips for co-parenting? Tyler with, um, yeah, co-parenting is like tough. You want to be able to keep them as far away as you can. Um, uh, really like making sure like you have to become both like 
both parents to them because they're not going to get the emotional support or vulnerability from another person. Do I try to justify why he had a five? Yeah, I mean, they'll try to justify anything. Like, in a conversation the other day, like, the, the narcissist was arguing with the other person, like, and trying to destroy their arguments by saying, you know, you're actually wrong. I only slapped you two times, not five times. Like, really? Like, they'll literally try to argue about anything. Um... I either did a video or it's coming out. I don't remember when when it is, um, but it's talking, or maybe I just released it on TikTok. I don't remember, but it's talking about um, arguing. Yeah, no, I just put it up on TikTok. It's talking about arguing and how they'll try to fight you technically. They'll try to defeat you on technicalities. Then they'll try to gaslight you, um, and then they'll try to destroy you. How they showed up, yeah. I mean, look at the facts of how they showed up, how they showed a love, how they showed care. It felt safe to love bomb gas that you had. Yeah, so it felt it felt safer to do that because that's all I knew. It was like a cycle. I didn't know how to get out of it. So it felt like, hey, this is the only cause for me to do because it's not safe to be honest because of previous trauma or issues or devaluing or, you know, feeling feeling shame by actually being honest before. Ask myself regularly why settle for someone that won't settle for you. Remember the facts. Facts are the key. The facts will set you free. Do all narcs Hoover even if they're one to describe you? No, not all of them Hoover. I think that's a, a fallacy that's on here is like everybody thinks the narc Hoovers and then when the narc doesn't Hoover, they're either doing a reverse Hoover or they're just not caring and they're just moving on. Um, but then sometimes people are like freaking out. They're like, wait, like they didn't Hoover me. Like what's wrong? Uh, Hoover's when the narcissist comes back to manipulate and control you. Like, you've broken up, they've left you, like, whatever it might be, and the narcissist is like, hey, I'm going to come back in their life, and I'm going to come back and take over control again. Uh, reverse Hoover is when I go silent, and it freaks you out so much, you reach out to me, and then I've got you. When you start to miss them and want to talk to them, ask yourself why you're in this position. That's a good question. Uh, do narc feels? Feels what? Um, narcissists do have emotions. A lot of people think they don't have emotions. They don't know how to process it. That's why a lot of times emotions come out as like rage and like above other, other generic emotions because they only have like the basic ones. Um, but yeah, they do feel. Um, it's just a lot of times they don't relate with like empathy. And that's either because they lack empathy or it's the refusal of acknowledging other people's emotions can still be empathy, can still be the lack of empathy. Um, but as I've been looking into some of it, reading DSM-5, things like that, I'm not sure that it's a correct statement to say that all narcissists are devoid of empathy. I think there's a decent amount that have empathy, but they have the conscious decision not to engage with empathy or other people's emotions. They blame to dissociate from emotion. They have emotion but can't connect with them. Yeah, so they go through the cycle. Have you all seen my cycle video? Let me see if I have it here. I know some people have. It's not mine initially, so I can't take full credit for it, but it is the cycle. Um... And it is from Wake Up Warrior. Um, but it is the cycle. Here, you all want to see the cycle real quick? Here, let me see. Um, can I flip the camera around? All right. Cool. All right, hang on tight. Here we go. Doo -doo. All right, so I already got it, I already got it um, listed here. All right, so it's a little zoomed in because I'm trying to show you. All right. What you got is, here, here we go. All right, what you got is, here's, here is life. Sorry, I'm holding the phone, so it's going to be a little, a little interesting. All right, here is life. And so life going is going on. You feel like everything's good, everything's connected. And then you get to a point in life when you have this blow up, you have this trigger, you have something that's happening in life that's causing a reaction, emotional, mental, physical, whatever it might be. Um, so like, let's say the trigger here could be you confront the narcissist about cheating. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, like, I just caught you on your phone, like cheating, okay? Well, 
We swing down here as we slide down, and the narcissist will feel guilt and they'll feel shame. But typically, the object of feeling guilt is like microscopic. I mean, we're talking like seconds. And the reason why it's seconds is because the purpose of feeling that guilt is to avoid it and get rid of it as quick as possible because guilt leads to shame. Shame is something that goes back to their own insecurities and goes back to the idea of like I'm not good enough and like all this stuff that's buried deep underneath they can't handle shame they can't handle that reality that they might be wrong that something might be wrong with them that they might not be the best person the most perfect person in the world so then they slide down to blame and as they get down to blame that's when it comes back at you you're the one that caused this if you hadn't looked through my phone you wouldn't be crying right now you wouldn't be hurt like all this type of stuff comes back to blame now here's the thing with blame is blame is is really difficult because as they give blame, if you don't take it and if, if they don't get what they want as far as giving the blame, it goes really fast to rage, like it goes super fast. Sometimes it'll last a little bit longer, sometimes you'll skip a little bit of the rage, but the rage is coming typically. So then we get down to the rage and that's when they're just completely mad, completely upset. And here's the crazy part. I don't talk about this a lot because it's kind of hard for me to actually explain and actually get to the point but when a narcissist is down here in rage and you're sitting over there and you're crying there's an aspect that when when you're crying that you start the whole cycle all over again and it's like super fast like it's going through like uh, i'll just say it in my ways it's going through my head like super fast okay so when i'm down here like she caught me cheating feel guilt feel shame feel blame i'm raging out now she's crying and i'm like okay here we go again like this is annoying it's inconveniencing my emotions blah 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 like we're here at this point she's crying and i'm raging and then as i see her cry this makes me more upset why it makes me more upset because it triggers me in the moment to feel guilt of the reason why she's crying is because i cheated okay and so then from here i feel shame I don't want to feel shame, so I either blame it away and say, like, okay, the reason why you're crying, like, you're just an idiot, like, you can't move on, like, whatever it might be. Like, I start blaming again, but ultimately what it does is it takes me back to rage even faster. It takes me back to rage even faster because I'm so upset that I can't fix it and I can't get past it. So then at this point, I either walk out or I rage more so that I just get the person to stop. Like my goal is like, it's gotta stop. It's gotta get better or it's gotta get worse, but like this has to stop because I can't handle someone else's emotions because it's triggering me back this whole cycle. And so like when you're in like a rage moment, like this cycle could be just firing off like nonstop, like really crazy. And yeah, it happens like super fast. So then you get down here in the pit. And so the pit is, not necessarily depression, because I don't think all narcissists get depressed. Maybe some more with like BPD, but you're down here in the pit, and like literally, like it's it's literally the same cycle. I'm just I already kind of talked about some of this, but you're down here in the pit, and you're trying to do anything and everything to get back. So here's the false lift, and the false lift is whatever I can do to get back when the relationship was good, whatever I can do to get back to the place where the relationship was functioning. And remember the way it was functioning before. That's why it has the parentheses. The way it was functioning before was broken. Like it was a bunch of lies. It was a bunch of bullshit. Like it doesn't really matter because it wasn't good. It was just my fake reality and your believing the fake reality of thinking that it was good. So the false lift is gonna have anything and everything that we can do to get to it. So we're talking gaslighting, manipulation, lying, devaluing, like anything I can do just to get back to the regular state. Now this can also be apologizing, quote unquote, so like saying I'm sorry but not actually apologizing. Um, this could be like love bombing. Like you have to remember on this part, it could be anything and everything because the goal is like just get out of this as fast as you can because this is down here where shame, guilt, and everything is running rampant. So all I want to do is I have to get up to this as fast as I can. The problem is when I get back up to this, I have not solved any of my problems because I'm still going to run into a trigger. I haven't dealt with that trigger. So as a result, it's going to keep going. Then the cycle will keep going and keep going and keep going.
That's the cycle. And it goes every single time. Then it goes crazy. And it goes fast. It's tough. And as you get in the cycle, you start not realizing you're ever in a cycle. You start not realizing that it's even there. And everything becomes a knee-jerk reaction. Start to feel guilt. I got to get away with it because that's going to make me feel shame. I can't feel shame. That's unsafe. There's no way I'm going to be able to do it. So I got to push it off on someone else. I got to push it to something else, whatever it might be. Can't fix it. Let's yell. Let's scream. Now I'm mad at myself. Now I'm upset because I've made it even worse. Now I have to go back through. Cycle's tough. I think there's a lot of narcissists out there that have no clue. I didn't. I didn't have a clue I was in a cycle. I didn't have a clue I was lying. I just thought this is how I was. But yeah. Anyways. What are the questions you got? Bottom line, I realized I had to work on me and figure out why I kept taking it back. Yeah. Do I now want to cycle start commenting? Yeah. Triggers. And as a result, I follow the stuff and the warrior stuff. Wake up warrior and so I stack. It's a process of writing it all out and going through fact and feelings and stories and getting to the place where I, I stack rage, I stack gratitude, I stack irritation, I stack pain, like I stack everything because it helps me process emotions and it helps me get to the place that I'm not just running through triggers constantly, but I'm actually working on dealing with them. I had the an awesome opportunity to work with someone on a one-on-one where I actually walked them through a rage stack. It took us about... 45 minutes it was really cool because like seeing what's worked with me and seeing what's helped other people and actually like walking someone through it was just it was awesome it was really cool <sighs> sorry that was like a moment that was a good moment but I do have a video on the, the narcissistic cycle um, it's it's not all original from me. It came from uh, Garrett J. White, Wake Up Warrior, um, but it 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 correlates and it applies very well. Uh, is my uh, is my Christian a therapist? Is my therapist a Christian therapist? Um, she is. She is a Christian, but she's not coming about it necessarily just with Christianity. So she's a psychologist, talk therapy. She has a narcissistic background, um, sex addiction, like all that stuff she has like in her wheelhouse. She also has a narcissistic mom, which makes it really relatable for her a lot of times as well too. Um, and she's also crazy. So it like works out really well. Like she literally knows, I wouldn't say knows everything, but knows a crap ton of stuff and researches a ton of stuff. Like like energy work and like how your body relaxes, like like literally like a bunch of stuff like it's it's crazy we've been through a couple of things that i've just been like what the heck is happening how can we help our kids and the other parent helps um be there for them emotionally be there for them emotionally help them process and develop their emotions in a place where they will never feel shame from you When my narc goes to jail, I'm going to send group pics to the fam to him waving. What was the question? Do most narcs have bad stuff to say about their exes? It's like they're never the problem. Yeah, they are never the problem because I think they're number one and it's a victim complex because even if like I ruined the relationship, I'm not going to admit that. Like I'm going to say it was you and I'm going to use that as a story to be able to talk to the next person. Good question. Why would they admit they're narcissists? I've seen narcissists come to a realization or a self-awakening just so they can basically future fake so they can get a little bit more time. But then they go right back to it. Tell you how to stop being angry tomorrow? Um, I don't have a quick fix on that. 
I worked with people to process emotions and stuff like that, but it's not a quick fix. Would it trigger you that someone loves uh, where to go? Would it trigger you that someone loves you so much knowing you can't love them? Mm, I want to say no, but I'm not sure I agree with your statement 100%. Um, do narcs have a savior complex sometimes? Yeah, a lot of times, especially with supply. It's not like the original, not like the grade A supply or the person they're with or stuck with, but like with the other people, yeah. Go on narc, tend to see promise to get therapy till he think I forgot about it. Yeah, they'll promise, they'll future fake, they'll say they're gonna go to therapy, they won't set it up. Mm, not necessarily triggering, I guess more like enabling, like I've got you locked in that you love me, but I don't really care so I can walk away. Um, that sort of answers, I think. Do they stalk or take revenge when discarded? Sometimes, yeah. I hate my narc more and more each day. Yeah, just make sure that hate doesn't consume you because hate isn't going to help you grow. Hate, hate is part of the healing process, but not if it's long-term. Then it becomes bitterness. Stop doing things in a while and relapse. Yeah, I've had ex who goes to therapy, but just for their own supply, nothing changes. Yeah. Um, oh, if he's in therapy and hasn't changed, he's just gaslighting the therapist. And he's just using it as supply. He's getting validated by that person. Um, is there a reason why they would leave the main one? Um, yeah, because then they have to admit. They have to admit failure. You know, they they lost a marriage. They lost a relationship or something like that. <clears throat> Can you talk more about narc mothers? Hmm. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Just because like, I don't really know a whole lot. I don't feel like I've had a ton of exposure to be the best voice on that. Frustrated now because he can test her voice. Oh, good grief. That's crazy. No, that would make me mad too. I hope you... Hope you're able to fight that and get that. Your mother's a diagnosed narc? Well, then come on here.